Hello everyone, this is Mayank and welcome back to my channel. So as we discussed in the poll, so today we will talk about plywood sector. So but first before we jump into the plywood sector, we need to understand what is the reason behind it, why we are discussing plywood sector. So as you can see in this particular uh, uh, screenshot, it says that uh, around Enroc investment company, right? Enroc is a management company basically for real estate. So as per their research, around 59% respondents says they want to invest in uh, real estate, but it was it's nothing new. Uh, investment in real estate is considered as a safe investment in India, and a lot of people prefer that. But what's uh, more uh, uh, kind of uh, give belief on the sector is the, this particular data where it says a staggering 49%, 49% of these were in the age bracket of 25 to 35 years. So that is more important. Previously, people who are uh, more on a uh, like plus 40 plus 40 years, they used to believe more on the real estate investment. But now, post pandemic. Millennials also want to get into real estate investment because they find it that is it's it is a kind of a safe investment. Previous it was around 20%, but post pandemic this has jumped to 49%, which is more than like almost two and a half times. So this is the change what is happening. This is very important because in India more than 50% population is going to be in this uh, age bracket. So when this age bracket is the major contributor to real estate investment. That leads to a lot of upcycle in the investment and that's why a lot of people you would have uh, read articles and everything people are saying we are in a real estate a housing boom which didn't happen for a long time in India for last a decade or so it was not it is kind of muted growth but right now the growth is not muted and a lot of upcycle is going to be seen in the coming few years and when real estate investment starts growing a lot of factors starts adding to that yeah so if you see if you see this particular part other report by real estate from Anrock also that's saying 71% NRIs are want to invest in India in the housing market. So 71% NRIs are want to invest in this particular market, right? So they are considering that India is the best bet in terms of real estate market, real estate growth, and that's why they want to bet on India. And that is higher than 55% pre-COVID. So pre-COVID 55% such people NRIs where they want to invest. Right now they increase by more than 16% and it reaches 71% of more than uh, NRIs which want to invest in India. So the second part. Third, if you see one more uh, article which I took a screenshot of it, that says recent joint survey by CII and Anrock is so the Delhi NCR, Hyderabad and Bangalore were the top picks to buy homes for NRIs. 60% of respondents will buy houses in one of these cities with 22% picking Hyderabad, 20% Delhi and 18% are picking Bangalore. So why I am highlighting these parts is that because you first need to understand why Plywood, so plywood is not something which you which is a regular consumption material, it's not FMCG, it's not uh, capital goods. It is related to a particular sector which is real estate or infrastructure. Infrastructure also it becomes more related to real estate rather than overall infrastructure. Like plywood you cannot use in building roads, plywood you cannot use in building uh, uh, bridges and things like that. So it directly relates to real estate. And if you see these points, you, it can also help you to go further and deep dive into real estate as a sector and then you can probably find some real estate companies also which can uh, give a good return in the future considering these three points which you highlighted point number one you can see here point number two you can see here that NRIs want to invest when NRI want to invest they will invest luxury properties so you can find the builders who are into luxury properties and then you can uh, look into their stock and do your research and everything third if you see they sing the 22% Hyderabad 20% Delhi NCR 18% Bengaluru so you can pick some companies which operates in these cities and then you go deep dive analysis and everything and then you might find a company where you want to invest keeping real estate as a sector. So this particular side itself is more than enough for you to deep dive and find some stock which might help you to get a good return. So since we are done with this let's jump into detail. So construction breakup. So when you construct a house so this screenshot I took from website called hapo.com. So they says that for building materials required for around 1000 square foot construction area. If you do this, 16.4% uh, money will invest in cements, 12.3% will invest on sand, 7.4% goes into gravel and everything, 24.6% goes on steel. So major contributor of construction in of a house goes in steel. Why are I talking about house? Because as I told you, plywood doesn't relate to other parts of infrastructure. It normally relates to housing or uh, commercial essential doesn't matter, but relates to housing. So we are talking about uh, house here. Then comes your uh, finishers. Finishers comes where paint, tiles, bricks. So these are the finishers. So these are 16.5% contribution. Then we go for fittings. So in, in case of fittings, plumbing is there, the electricals are there, then uh, sanitary are there. So basically this can, this entire graph can help you to look into individual sectors. Cement, ultra tech cement and this is the sector. 
sand there is nothing listed agravels uh, sorry gravels is nothing listed steel there are lot of companies who falls in the steel sector there are lot of company in the paints we know asian paints indigo paints bojo paints you can look into that also tiles we have asian granito tiles we have sera we have uh, kajaria also you can look into those go the real estate sector itself leads to growth in many many sectors so these are the sectors which lead to growth bricks obviously there is nothing then comes plumbing and go for all those pipes and everything electrical go for cables and other things sanitary go for uh, sera or things like that to provide who manufacture sanitary wares then comes the sector which we are talking about plywood so that is windows and doors so when you construct the house during construction you need to put windows and doors you see in metro cities they are putting aluminium or uh, some kind of it's aluminium only that windows but doors they can't get away with uh, without plywood or without any kind of wooden material so for doors this particular uh, windows and doors also you consider you need uh, some kind of uh, wooden materials so this is particular small sector which we are going to talk about it looks very small but it is not as small as looks here we we'll deep dive into this you can uh, pause the video maybe you can read this thing in detail and it will might help you to deep dive into other sectors also so uh, that's something this video is quite important so you, it can help you to look into many many other sectors and many many other stock opportunities so if you find this helpful so far do like the video uh, and do share it to friends and family also if you think this can help a lot of people and your friends uh, to find some stock for the investment purpose and if you know the channel don't forget to subscribe so let's jump uh, further so construction breakup so this was what we saw how it uh, gets construct while you construct the house you need only windows and doors of uh, uh, of, of, of wood material primarily you need uh, wood in case of in the door in case of uh, metro cities but then comes the next part so after you construct the house then comes your interior so this is where plywood is mostly used this the industry thumbnail that around 10% you need to invest on interior so what comes in interior if you see kitchen you need to do interiors so all this uh, modular kitchen and everything so modular kitchen is trend so everybody in, in a small towns if you go they want to go for modular kitchen so you need uh, plywood for that then if you go for wardrobes you need wood for that then if you go for furnitures also nowadays because carpenter and all those things people don't want to get into deal, get into all these things they want to buy ready made so if you then if you buy ready made most of the things comes through wooden material only so furniture is also a sector through which you will invest money so when you buy a house or when you construct a house first you need to invest small amount in the construction then a bigger amount comes in here so if you see example suppose you buy a 2 bhk which is costing around 50 lakhs right so around 5 lakh rupees will spend on interior and i'm sure out of this 5 lakh if you see 50% is the raw material cost it becomes around 2.5 lakhs so right so out of 2.5 lakhs my experience says around 2 lakhs will invest only in wood wood plywood other kind of woods we can discuss that in the detail in the other like this video only but next part but around 2 lakhs you will spend roughly around 2 lakhs you will invest only in raw material which is some in some way or other related to wood so for every house this is our market basically what we are going to talk about in this video so this is how it works now plywood sector roadmap so this i took from a uh, industry research uh, a journal basically it's a website so it says the plywood market of india is per 2021 21 22 it's 195.8 billion rupees but look at the growth imrk group expects that it's it will reach 297.2 billion dollar with a cagr of 7.5 percent that is a much bigger growth than many other sectors okay and uh, because what has happened then because of covid a lot of pe people have lost job and they suddenly realize that they want financial independence and they want to have their own house so that tomorrow they can stay in their house and then uh, some kind of financial independence is a part of financial independence so a lot of people want to buy their house in the first uh, we saw how many millennials want to buy house in the age bracket of 25 to 35 so the shift is happening right now and if you see there are two things commercial and then comes residential so this divided two parts if you see further is the growth so growth wise if you see from 2022 till 27 it will grow exponentially uh, not exponentially but it will grow in the upside so there is a growth happening and then if you see residential and commercial majority of comes in residential that is this is somewhere around 60 percent is commercial and around 40 percent is residential this is the sector distribution so here if you see sector distribution so 50 out of 100 percent 58 percent are plywood materials and allied okay so market share basically so if you see in the Indian wood panel industry, the total market size is around 39,000 crores, out of which 58% is given around 20, 22,500 crores goes to plywood. 
in that also 25% is only with organized player organized player means century plywood or kajaria or uh, a green ply this kind of organized players only 25% but there are 75% which are unorganized i know someone who has more than 7 to 8 factories in the plywood sector and is not part of any organized company is just organized sector but they are making a lot of money and they are taking a lot of market share so 75% is organized sector 25% so yes, 75% unorganized sector and 25% organized sector. Now when you move out the plywood from the pie chart, then you will see 23% are the laminates. So the leading laminate maker in India is Century. So you can go ahead and read about Century also. 23% is uh, laminates, 13% is particle board and 6% are MDF. So this is how the distribution is done. Now if you see how you can see the growth happening. So first the when it's been treated as a commodity. So plywood is in general treated as a commodity. So when you treat as a commodity, it has a low price, it has a low margin, and it has low differentiation. So if you take a ply and you remove the company's name, there is very less chance that a general, a general, a normal human being, layman can find the difference between two or three different kind of plies. It's not something which we as a layman can understand. You need some kind of expertise to understand what is, what kind of ply, which is good, which is bad. So the differentiation is very less because it all looks same, all sizes comes in same size, standard size. So differentiation is very less. But the moment you become brand like Century or Green Ply, you can charge a higher price because people know they will give good quality. Since you can charge a higher price, the margin increases and differentiation high because of the brand value. Then your service better customer service, better price and then higher customer lifetime value. So it's a higher customer lifetime value means when you construct a house you buy doors of plies of century then you go for kitchen cabinets you buy the same brand uh, plywoods then you go for furnitures or kind of cupboards then you go for the same companies so your customer lifetime value increases so this is how you move up the cycle basically and then how you increase the margin and everything so this is how the entire sector is distributed and you can again you can take a pause and probably can read further into this and if you can make more sense, sense out of it you can probably uh, go ahead then we move into sector distribution again. So how the shift is happening for unorganized to organized. So we all know what happened in pandemic. A lot of small businesses got shut down. The ones which are unorganized, they don't have any capital to market. They don't have any kind of extra capital to keep running the company. So though they got shut down and shift is happening for organized to organized. And this is happening everywhere. Every small, like it's not about sector of plywood. It's happening in FMCD sector. It's happening in your uh, apparel sector. Everywhere these things are happening. So why other reasons what they are saying apart from COVID is customer want to make more informed inform choices. Raw material security is uh, like they have more power of uh, purchasing raw materials. Then mid segment expansion. So people basically people who are lower middle class moving to upper middle class or middle class and then people from middle class moving to upper middle class. So that shift is happening because of which a lot of people want to go for branded products. Then the biggest problem for the small unorganized sector happened is the GST. Once GST and EVA bill introduced, a lot of people moved out of the market. And then preference for branded products. I have discussed many times from apparels to your consumer durables. People want to go for branded products. People don't want to uh, keep themselves limited to unbranded local products. So this is how sector distribution is happening. Shift from unorganized to organized, market, organized sector is happening in the case of this particular company or this particular sector. Then if you see how the sector is divided, divided into plywood. MDF and particle board majorly if you go for plywood there will be a lot of other plywoods as well but in general plywood we can consider as a part of the entire thing then if you go for MDF MDF is one more part then for particle board particle board is one more part so here in this chart you can see how they are differentiated so the type of this is the types right and these are the different parameters to choose so if you see almost all are eco-friendly because they are made of wood, wood and then plywood is more heat resistant and plywood is more moisture resistant compared to your MDF and particle board. And this is the reason why particle plywood has been used consistently in the residential part because they are heat resistant and moisture resistant. And then if you see screw holding capacity in plywood is high because the density is higher. So screw holding capacity has it reduces in the case of MDF and particle board. Particle board is the most poorest form of uh, in terms of uh, this particular uh, screw holding capacity. MDF is also not good because once you put a screw in that place, it creates a hole. So if the screw comes out from that, that place, you cannot put it back. So that it's all the density game. So if you 
if you are available you can go to your shop and see samples of these three particle board mdf and plywood and probably you'll come to know how the density looks like it can it's easily identifiable if you see long lasting wise they are particle board and mdf are better so this is something which you can look further also so this is how a different part of this plywood industry uh, mostly works around so if you see any call call letter of uh, century plier green plier green lane so they will tell you that uh, they will not go into detail of plywood mr is the plywood uh, boil water resistant is a kind of plywood they will not talk about all those things they will talk about how the sector how this plywood mdf and particle board what they are doing what kind of capex they are doing you know, what the margin they are talking about so they will mostly talk only about these three things plywood mdf and particle board so let's jump next so what is the commercial usage so this is the screenshot taken from century ply and it's interesting to read so basically people say that mdf is better than particle board okay but when it comes to uh, real usage then lot of people use particle board so this you can read from here so uh, the management says that it's very difficult to club online furniture into one category because someone asks that all the online we talk about mdf being good online but all the online companies selling furniture they are selling particle board so on the reply says it's very difficult to club online furniture into one category because there are so many options right see for instance is saying ikea the major uh, brand in case in case of uh, do it yourself furniture they use 80% of particle board because of cost efficient and that's the reason it, uh, this company ikea can give product at very low price because they use particle board and a very small and significant part of mdf but in india for residential furniture mdf is the preferred third generation wood panel product whereas for office furniture particle board is currently the preferred product why we have seen the last uh, video that it's very uh, so i'll go back and check so basically particle board easy to clean and long lasting and since it's an office and all you are not going to cook you are not going to do anything with water particle board can be used and particle board also is the cheapest form of uh, plywood now here you can see on price particle board is one third of the price of plywood so if plywood you buy cost 1000 particle board will cost you only 333 rupees so one third whereas mdf would be half the price so basically so mdf will be cost will be costing half of your uh, uh, plywood right so this is the cost differentiation also so that's the reason why a lot of uh, particle board is used in commercial and a lot of mdf is being used in uh, residential purposes so this is something also which you can uh, highlight but for residential furniture most of the ready made residential furniture is showing a trend of being leaning towards mdf rather than particle board so this is very important line i'll underline this this is the shift which is happening in the market a lot of people are shifting from particle to mdf even in commercial also slowly slowly people are shifting from particle board to mdf so this is important now i'll move to next so growth story what is happening so i told you in the previous slide that mdf is the where the shift is happening and not particle board so people are moving from particle board away plywood market share rest of the world is 30% india right now it's 80% is plywood and uh, 2030 estimated that plywood uh, will reduce from 80 to 50% of the market share whereas right now mdf is only 20% estimated that by by 2030 50% will be mdf so it's a, here is the increment of 30% where in the plywood pure plywood it will reduction of minus 30% okay so this is what is happening in case of product growth so this is why i am saying mdf is the growth story okay so keep a note mdf is something which is a growth story probably this will also help you to identify the correct stock in this particular sector so if you want me to create a video comparing a few players in the sector and then uh, probably we can analyze and understand what they are doing and how their future looks like please let me know in the comment section so that will help me to decide whether we should create a video on this particular part or not so basically what i'm talking about we should do we need to create a video where we compare different different players okay so this is how it looks so i'll try to erase this and then second part if you see more then this is how mdf industry is size so probably here financial year 17 18 19 if you see then 22 this is the growth 19% growth and this is not plywood this is only mdf and that's why repeatedly i'm saying mdf is the growth story how this mdf is uh, so south india wants to consume more of 45% of mdf market share north has 30% west has 15% and others are 10% like east and northeast so this is the market basically 45% further if you see here Then MDF consumption in India, yes, the size of MDF market in India. So India right now 
previous year it was 3200 was the market share and market says right now 26 will be 5000 cr and if you go further in terms of india india has right now 1.75 cubic meter of consumption and china has 50 cubic million, million of consumption so this goes up to how much almost it goes up to 40 times so this is the now i'm not saying india will become china in a very short period of time but this is the kind of growth which you can see even if it takes 20 years to grow but this is a 40x is the growth which will happen in the mdf market so mdf has a lot of room to move here if you see wood panel consumption 81% in india right now other wood products where only 19% is your uh, mdf but in other countries if you see 18% are mdf and only 20% are uh, your plywood so the conversion here we're talking about is mdf has a lot of growth so if you talk about mdf mdf growth probably would be this big size when it come to ply so uh, ply means particle board or plywood the growth can be only this size so in some cases it will shrink also so this is important factor to note then we'll see why uh, particle board so why mdf and where its applications are so mdf can be used in multiple ways cabinets kitchen cabinets roofing gift boxes electrical circuit boards black boards like painting and then sound proofing for speakers and everything and theater set construction so these are the different different options where mdf can be used and mdf is a totally the growth story here so whichever company is focusing a lot on the mdf this mdf will increase one more thing i want to highlight here when we talk about mdf right so i'll just erase and write here so that is not included in the graphs so when you talk about uh, mdf and ply and everything else so there is one more thing to see margin so if you talk about margin right so margin when it comes to business margin is extremely high so i'll divide into this to this into two parts so when we talk about margin here so when we talk about uh, sorry this thing is not happening okay so here is the margin and here is the cost of operation c operation right so when we talk about margin the margin is highest in the case of mdf it is second highest in the case of ply and it is the lowest in the case of particle board okay so particle board but when you go to cost of operation cost of operation is highest in the case of uh, particle board okay is the highest in the case of particle board and it is the second highest in the case of ply and it is the uh, it is the lowest in the case of mdf right so this is where also mdf sits very nicely where you, we can see the growth happening so a company is a company i need to spend least amount of money in case of mdf and i can make the highest amount of margin when it comes to mdf because the selling price is high so this is how mdf is the growth story so my understanding is that whenever you want to analyze a company in this particular plywood sector go for the companies which are either with doing very good in mdf or the companies which have a lot of capex plan or future plan which is surrounded around mdf because this is where the growth is going to happen as per and this i'm not saying as per one company if you see any statement any industry uh, growth statement or any company's conco letter everybody want to focus on mdf and this is the true thing happening so before we jump into discussion of any other particular company this exercise we all can do we can look into the annual report or conco report and look for any company which is a good capex plan around mdf so this is what i want to talk about now let's go back so this is what we discussed the applications but every sector comes with problems so what are the problems first imports are 10 to 15% cheaper because for other countries these imports are compared to domestic prices these are 10 to 15% cheaper then rise in price of timber and chemical so if you see last few quarters the timber price was in i'll just highlight here timber price increased by around 10 to 12% so that is squeeze the margin of the plywood companies chemicals what they use like phenol and everything that price almost increased by 25% so this also reduced their margin so these two things happened but currently going forward they are seeing this chemical price is starting to go down and the margin will get better with time and timber price also started go down but not much but this has gone significantly down and this is going to help them to rest, uh, restrain their margin going forward so this one risk third risk comes rise in the cost of labor in india so uh, if you just want to compare the cost of labor 3 years back and now probably you will see 20% increase in the cost of labor so this is something which again it can be region specific if you are living in some region where the poverty level is very high you might not see 20% increase you might see 4 4 5% increase but regions where 
there is shortage of labor the price of labor cost increases a lot places like bangalore so this is a place where I stay and stayed a long of long period of time so i can say the price of labor increased by more than 20% in some cases in other metro cities also i believe 10 to 20 10 to 20% is the normal trend so this is also happening if it increases a lot then this is a problem for the sector because it's a it's a labor intensive process then here comes government regulations around cutting of timbers basically cutting of trees so this is something which is regulated you cannot just go anywhere suddenly and cut a tree one or two is fine but industrial purpose you need to cut lots of trees this is not something which you can just go ahead and do whenever you wish to so you need this is all regulated by the government so if government comes tomorrow and says okay you cannot cut trees in this area for next five years so and that area is supposed to be your source of uh, raw materials in that case the sector will suffer or company as an individual will suffer so this is a very important point to note so government regulations is also something which we need to be worried about if your company's factory or uh, source of timber lies in a region which is very much government regulated or government might want to put some kind of regulations on that then this might impact your stock prices then comes a recession which mutes the housing sector growth right now we are in a boom okay we are already in a boom basically so prices of housing has increased by six to seven percent in the case some cases increased by luxury increased by ten percent also the price of housing so this is something which we are in a boom but saying that uh, and also people are like everybody is saying india is going to have a growth story not like uh, recession like other countries but consider the negative part of it if the recession comes like well, like it's a rocket kind of thing in that case people might stop buying house or people who have already bought house they might to sell the house so in that case this might happen the sales of plywoods and all will decrease because plywood plywood is directly proportional to your housing it's directly proportional to housing it's not pop, 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 uh, proportional to infrastructure directly proportional to house. the mo moment people start stop buying houses the moment people stop doing interiors and other things in the houses plywood sector will go down so this is a very important risk so these are the few things which i uh, want to discuss with you regarding the sector the risks and the opportunities over here so if you think this video is helpful to you if you think that uh, it will give you a, some kind of insight to uh, research more and find a stock which suits your investment profile so do like the video do share with your friends and family and if you are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe if you have any comments feedback please uh, put in the comment section and let us know if you need a new video on the comparison of different players in this particular sector so thank you so much for watching stay happy stay safe